Well, I'm going to figure out the Laplace transformation of the function t, right? And we'll be using the definition again. So right here, this is going to be the integral from 0 to infinity, e to the negative dS t times the function here, which is t. And don't forget, it's always dt in the Laplace transformation. All right, now you see we have t times e to the forever t. We have to use integration by parts. And of course, this is an improper integral. So I'm going to first write this down as the limit as n goes to infinity. And then we will have the integral from 0 to n. Let me put the t first in the front. And then we have e to the negative s t. And then we have the dt right here. All right, now this part to integrate, as I mentioned there, we have to use integration by parts. Of course, we do it by the di method. On the side, let's put on the d and the i. And plus, minus, plus. I think this is enough. I'm going to differentiate t, and then I will integrate e to the negative s t. So to differentiate t, we get 1, and then do it again, we get 0, so we can stop, right? And now, I'm going to integrate e to the negative s t with respect to t. So the first part is going to give us e to the negative s t, and don't forget, you divide it by the derivative of this which is the same as 1 over negative s. And I will have to do this again. I will put this down, e to the negative s t, but I have to divide it by negative s again, right? So altogether, we end up 1 over positive s squared. And now the result of the integrations right here is just going to be this times this and this times that. So I will put this down. This is still the limit as n goes to infinity, and let me just write this down as following. t times 1 over negative s, and this, right? And this is positive. Positive times negative, it is negative first. So we have negative t over s, and then we have e to the that, so e to the negative s t. And then we have negative 1 times this, which is negative 1 over s squared, and then e to the negative s t. Okay, and then we go from 0 to n. Alright, so it's like this, right here. Plugging n into all the t's, and then plugging 0 into all the t's, and then subtract, right? So, we will have the limit as capital N goes to infinity. So, here's the first part. Plugging n into all the t's, we will have negative n on the top right here, over s, and then e to the negative s, t becomes n, and then plug in here. So we have minus 1 over s squared, e to the negative s, and then we have the n like that. And this is the first part. And we subtract, we plug in 0 into all the t's. So we will have negative 0 over s times e to the negative s times this t becomes 0. And then we will have 0 in here. So we have minus 1 over s squared e to the negative s times t is 0, like that. OK, and then another big parenthesis for this limit. All right, as you can see, this part right here is a nice part because it doesn't involve any uh, variables for in terms of n. We have to worry about these, right? So let's look at this one first. Once again, you know this kind of thing is either going to be infinity or zero. We want this to be zero, right? Otherwise, if it's infinity, the whole thing is going to be messed up, right? Anyways, I want this part to be zero. Let me just put up, want this part to be zero, right? How can we make this part to be zero? Well, one over s squared right here, right? Subtract this, but just look at this. 1 over s squared, and then we have e to the negative s n, just like the previous uh, situation. As n goes to infinity, this is infinity, and we have negative times infinity. As long as I make sure that, so let me write it down. As long as I make sure that s is positive, you will see negative times positive times infinity, that will be negative infinity, e to the negative infinity, you can put that down in the denominator, right? and then you know it will be 0. So if you want this to be 0, you have to make sure s is greater than 0. Right? s has to be positive. Well, 
we also want this part to be 0 as well. Here's a small part though. As you can see, you have e to the negative sn right here. If s is positive, you can put this down in the denominator, and you do have the n right here as well. And let me write this down for you guys. So if you focus on the limit as n goes to infinity, negative n, if I can put this part into a denominator, it will look like this. Over s is still s right here. e to the positive sn. Right? Once I put this down in the denominator, you know this will also be 0, isn't it? And the reason is because on the bottom, we have an exponential function, e to the whatever n. On the top, it's just technically negative n to the first power. If you would like, you can change all the n into x, into x, and then do L'Hopital's rule. You will know e to the something is growing faster, much faster than um, whatever n to the first power, right? So this is true. Once again, I just to make sure that I can legitimately bring this term down to a denominator. So I will also have to ensure s is greater than 0, which is the same condition right here. All right? So anyways, this part, we want it to be 0 when we have this, and that will take care of it. And I will just write this down for you guys at the end. The first part it will be 0, and then we subtract. That's the negative 0 times whatever right here. It's just 0. And then this is minus 1 over s squared. 0 times s is still 0. Negative 0 is still 0. e to the 0 is 1. So this is just going to be 1 right here. So this is what we have. And as you can see, negative times negative, of course, we end up with 1 over s squared. If you wanted this to be true, like uh, works out to be this nicely, you have to attach the condition s has to be greater than 0. Therefore, when you have t, right, f of t is equal to t in the t world, you do the Laplace transform, you will get 1 over s squared in the s world. And be sure you attach this condition, s has to be positive, namely s has to be greater than 0. And that's it.